In this video, we're going to talk about the drugs of abuse. Uh, it'll kind of range from the stimulants versus the hallucinogens uh, and so on. But the one where I'd say you want to spend a lot of your time focuses, focusing in on is going to be on the marijuana. I mean, obviously, with the way our society is these days, it's becoming more prevalent. And so I think you'd, you'd want to put a lot of your focus in on that, on that drug. So hope you like the video. All right, guys. So this is kind of the uh, drugs of abuse kind of questions. A 54-year-old male presents to the emergency room for frostbite. On his fifth day of admission, post-amputation of multiple digits of his lower extremity, the patient becomes hostile towards staff, hallucinating, and, re and required PRM medications for severe agitation. His past medical history is relatively unknown as he is homeless. Uh, on admission, his urine toxicology screening was positive for marijuana. Which of the following is the most likely cause of the patient's condition? So all we know, we don't much about of a history. We know that his urine toxicology screening was positive for marijuana, but nothing else. Hard to say what they were uh, screening for. Now, fifth day of admission, he starts going bonkers. So we look at the answer choices, which are all from cannabis, as the patient is a heavy user. Um, that may be uncomfortable, but it's not gonna really cause hostility. Opioid intoxication from pain meds? Well, I, I get they're trying to lead us into this whole thing about he had surgery with opioids, but that might actually, uh, you know, that'd be more sedating effect or whatever. So I'm not too keen on that one. PCP, now, you know, that one does, whenever we see the word belligerent or something, we gotta keep that in our differential, but does that explain on the fifth day of admission when, I, you know, perhaps this question should have said he had no visitors and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but I don't have a lot of evidence to support PCP on this thing, especially when his initial screen was negative, not like he's a regular user and somehow got some into the hospital. Cocaine withdrawal, um, again, it's like a stimulant coming off a stimulant. Uh, you know, usually you crash after that, right? You, you, you sleep for a couple of days. Alcohol withdrawal. This is gonna be your big take home point for this question is, be careful that when there's a question that they wanna lead you in this direction, that they didn't tell you this guy was an alcoholic, but on the fifth day, as you're going through withdrawals, you know, the only thing that they, you had, it was kind of implied per se, because the guy is, um, you know, he's homeless. I mean, it's kind of making a huge, you know, kind of uh, implication there, but it's from the alcohol. And then fifth, the fifth day is gonna be the one with the delirium, uh, you know, tremens. It kind of peaks, right? That peaks on day, uh, on day five. If we were to go through the alcohol withdrawal stages, you know, you get this kind of like auditory hallucinations, you know, pretty much within the first day. You worry about seizures, you know, between day one and two. That's when it, you know, I guess when you say it peaks. And then around day five, on the fifth day, you know, that's when the peak of the delirium tremens to where, you know, you can essentially go bonkers uh, from the alcohol withdrawal. So be careful on the exam. Look for the guy who's been in the hospital, who may be homeless, or some indication that he may drink alcohol, and uh, just understand, be on, the, be on the lookout for that type of question. This one says, an 18-year-old male is brought to the emergency department by his mom because of his erratic behavior. His mom states that he has been isolating himself from family and friends and complains of abdominal discomfort that is relieved by hot showers. Patient noted to have bloodshot eyes and recently broke up with his longtime girlfriend. Based on this information, which of the following is most likely cause of the patient's condition? Now, if you're pretty, if you think you'd know this one, on, know this answer already without even looking, just for the fact that that abdominal discomfort that is relieved by hot showers, you know, put that in the comment box that you knew this one, right? Because that's really important, and it's pretty common, especially if the way our our society is going these days, is whenever you see abdominal discomfort relieved by hot showers, I want you to jump on marijuana abuse, and I'm talking heavy marijuana abuse. They call it uh, cannabinoid, wait, cannabinoid, if I can spell it right, hyperemesis uh, syndrome. You know, they, these people, they, you know, they might come to the emergency room, it's like, oh, I have abdominal pain, they get this gigantic workup, and I, ironically, I had a, I had a consult, it was, no, it was a couple weeks ago, but I was consulted on this, this, this person, and they were, you know, severe abdominal pain, you know, abdominal pain discomfort, they kept going back to the emergency room over and over and over. And of course it was a female, so they do all that type of workup as well. But at the end of the day, I, I asked him, how, how, much, how much marijuana are you using? You know, and it was extensive because that is what can cause this. And it's relieved by hot showers. And this person, it was relieved by putting a hairdryer um, on, on, the, on their stomach and stuff like that. So 
Anyways, uh, the bloodshot eyes, obviously, you know, conjunct they have that conjunctival um, issues, goes with marijuana, recently broke up with his longtime girlfriend. You know, that can actually be like an adjustment disorder as long as it's within three months of the stressor. But the fact his erratic, be you know, when I say erratic behavior and isolating, this guy's abusing the marijuana, and that's what's causing these type of symptoms. All these other ones are just distractors, okay? So make sure you have that concept down. And I can't stress enough, no marijuana for step one, because again, with it being more uh, legal and more common, we're gonna be seeing a lot more of the uh, side effects of any type of abuse with that. As you know, the marijuana these days isn't like the old school marijuana. It's a lot more concentrated um, and people have more issues. A 27 year old male presents to the emergency department after he was found unresponsive in his apartment with suspicion of overdose. He is given Narcan without any significant response. Pupils are minimally reactive and dilated. Um, alcohol levels are unremarkable. Unable to obtain urine toxicology screening. He is minimally responsive to stimuli. Respirations are 10 uh, of the following substances, which is the most likely attributable to the patient's condition. So the guy pretty much, he overdosed on something, it appears like. But they give him Narcan and he doesn't respond. So if they gave him Narcan, what, what were they trying to, what were they trying to, you know, bump off the receptor? They're trying to bump off the opioids. So I'd go through here and get rid of all the opioids because um, if Narcan didn't show a reaction or the patient didn't wake up in, in a lot of discomfort, then we know it's probably not him. Now, if I, um, if I overdosed on, um, this guy's got respirations of 10, 10 per, you know, breaths per minute. So do you think he overdosed on a stimulant? You know, chances are not. So which will be all these are stimulants? Well, we got the cocaine and the amphetamine. And remember, if I'm gonna, when I think opioid, I put my hand like this where it's an O. So if I in, if I overdose on opioid, it would be a pinpoint pupil. If I on a, on cocaine, which is a stimulant, my pupils will be dilated. So you know, they will have the dilated pupils, but the fact is, respirations are significantly uh, decreased. So chances are, it's not going to be uh, this guy. So now I'm down to alcohol and uh, benzos. Well, uh, what other information do I have here? They didn't give us anything that says, well, it says alcohol levels are unremarkable. All right, so that guy's off the table. Benzos, right? Respirations are down, right? This is very sedating. And it kind of, benzos basically do the same thing the brain of alcohol does. Uh, and, and, and long story short, it's gonna be more of a, of a suppressant. So respirations are low and Narcan didn't work. I gotta be jumping all over the benzodiazepine. Um, okay, and if you know, they could ask benzos, remember how we differentiate that? It's, uh, it was the increased frequency of the chloride ion channel versus the barbiturate was increased in the duration of the chloride channel. Total side note, um, anyways, we gotta, we gotta know these things. Now, a uh, 23-year-old who recently graduated from military basic training is celebrating with friends. After coming out of the men's room, restroom that was smoke-filled, he becomes extremely agitated and belligerent towards staff at the club. He assaults a bouncer and bartender. Patient is most likely intoxicated, um, I should put that exposed to, with the, um, with which, uh, which of the following substances. Anytime that you see belligerent, um, someone's just out of control, you better go through your answer choices and put PCP. Now, what's also pathognomonic of this? You can see vertical nystagmus, okay? That almost comes up on any type of mental health, psychiatry uh, exam. You're gonna see the vertical nystagmus, so beware of that on your, on, your, on your steps, okay? But if you're extremely agitated, think PCP. Vertical nystagmus, think PCP. You know, amphetamines can get you, can definitely get you up, but they're not gonna cause someone typically, okay, for this purposes, PCP is the best answer. But I mean, can, can meth obviously make you go bonkers? Yes. Seeing a lot of that these days when they put some um, synthetics uh, mis mixed with all this stuff, even with the marijuana, um, you're talking like spice and, and stuff like that. But marijuana excess probably wouldn't make it belligerent. Uh, LSD, you gotta be thinking uh, it's more of a hallucinogen. And of course, alcohol intoxication is gonna bring you down. It's more of a, a sedative, okay? But again, if I was to go through all these, I would put a lot of my focus on the marijuana and just know some of the basics with the alcohol um, when it goes, delirium tremens, you know, seizure risk and stuff like that. So I uh, hope this was helpful.